Yeah, but it's just like next she turns around and she's like, ooh, war, he's so fine. And like she jumps his bones. No, pun not intended because he was, he was flush. Welcome back to another episode of Romancing the Monsters. I'm S. I'm Seth. And today we're going to be discussing War, the second book in the Four Horsemen series by Laura Dalasa. And do you want to start off with the uh, summary, the blurb? Sure. Okay. So like S said, this is the second book in the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse series, which means the world is ending. And in this book, we meet War, who's the second horseman, um, but before that, we get introduced to Miriam, who is our heroine of the story, and she's a weapons maker, and the story starts off with her seeing War entering Jerusalem, which is where she lives, um, and she's obviously shocked to see, see him with an army of humans that just, like, follow him on horseback, on, like, they're running. She just is shocked that he has followers, and he decides to decimate the whole city of Jerusalem, and Miriam and him cross paths, and right off the bat, while they're, they're fighting and she's trying to, like, fight for her life, he also looks at her and calls her his wife in a language that she didn't think she would know, and she understands him completely in his language. Um, and so she is like, what the heck? I'm not your wife. <laughs> like, that's just, that, that, that ain't it. Um, and so she's taken to his camp and she's forced to watch prisoners either swear allegiance to war or die. Um, and then when it's her turn, she kind of decides that I would rather die than serve him. Um, and, but war won't let her choose death. He's like, nah, you're my wife, so you will be alive. Um, so it just continues on like that in the sense where like her and war continue to butt heads on numerous occasions. Um, because obviously she's trying to save the humans that he's murdering. It comes up time and time again, um, in terms of like, you know, their big problem. He just is there to destroy cities and kill people. And she obviously wants to save those people and save those cities and like things happen. And he just wants her to surrender completely, which means like her body. So he doesn't take anything from her in terms of like, un he doesn't take anything unwillingly. It's time for him to kill people again after they've moved camp, and he's done it, and then for the second time she witnesses it is when she's actually with him, and she decides to go with him and his group of people to start killing off his men and his warriors. So she kind of succeeds in that a bit, and then after that whole time is done, she realizes, wait, war isn't really done yet, and uh, he decides to raise the dead. <laughs> And anyone who's slipped through the cracks, he kills them with the dead. Um, and she just discovers more and more things about him. And uh, she tries to continue to foil his plots and try to warn cities and also try to evacuate cities. Yeah, that's just where it goes at this point. Um, does she fall in love with war or does she not? I don't know. I mean, I do know, obviously. But... Yeah. <laughs> so, as did you like this book? Um, yes. Okay. I loved it. I felt like I read it pretty... I felt like I went through it pretty quickly, even though it was a thick book. Mm -hmm. I also felt that it was darker than the first one. Mm. I don't know if you got the same feeling. I felt like it was darker. Um, I loved Miriam. I loved how strong she was. Yeah. I loved War. He had, like, a really filthy mouth. <laughs> War was dirty. Yeah. Um, I love the fact that he kept calling her wife as well. Oh, my gosh. I Right? It's, like, it was... It's so primal and, like so barbaric yes. but like every time he called her wife I yeah. was like okay tingles tingles <laughs> um but I will say that even though it was a thick book for me it felt like which I don't think it's a bad thing but I think it was a little bit repetitive okay in the sense that not much happened like war went off to kill people and then he would come back and sleep with her and then it just it just yeah. felt a little bit repetitive for yeah for the thickness of the book for how long it was um but I don't think it was a bad thing what about you what did you think did you like it did you I really liked it I enjoyed the 
the story. I enjoyed Miriam as a character. Even War as a character at times, I really enjoyed him. Mm-hmm. But, like, your repetitive comment, I, I agree with that. But I also feel like maybe it was him trying to um, remind himself, like, I guess, remind the readers also that he is inhuman and, like, he has a duty. Mm-hmm. So, like, maybe, like, the constant killing was kind of to show that. But, like, I do feel like they showed a lot of cities being decimated quite a lot. Like, there were just so many instances of that. But I feel like it's probably him showing that he isn't human, which we already know that. Um, And I did like his character um, because of how different he was from Pestilence. Like, I didn't want to go in comparing him with Pestilence, which is the first guy in the first book. Mm -hmm. But, um... He already knew humans. He already knew, like, their ins and outs. He knew, like, their minds, their everything about humanity. And, like, he knew them. And in terms of, like, pestilence, he was learning humans, learning about humans through Sarah's eyes. That was her Mm -hmm. name, I believe. In this one, war drank, war had sex, war did this and this and this. And pestilence was learning about all of that through Sarah's eyes. So I thought it was really different to see a four horsemen of the apocalypse already know how to do or learn how to be human. Mm-hmm. And we got it with war. Yeah. I did end up comparing them a little bit throughout the... Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> did you, like, have any comparisons that you, like, wanted to pull out between the two? Um, I just felt like Pestilence was more... Well, more naive, of course. Like how you said, like, yeah. he was learning through Sarah. And I felt like war was more brutal. And maybe more honest. The way they regarded sex. And I know like this is just like very like a basic. Mm-hmm. But I just thought like with Pestilence, he didn't really, that wasn't a like a an event or something that he ever cared to do. And mm-hmm. like he didn't even like feel the urge, like the sexual urges that uh, Pest, not sorry, not Pestilence, War feels. Mm-hmm. And like War has had meaningless sex from the get go. Like since he like became human and corporal. He's been having sex with, like, numerous women. And, like, Pestilence really learned about sex and had sex for the first time with someone he loved. So I thought that was also interesting because, like, War finally got to experience that, like, lovemaking with someone he does love. Mm -hmm. And I just like to see, like, the difference between the two because I feel like as an author, like, you can somehow, like, fall into the trap of making these books very similar. And um, because they are, like, the same characters, basically, with just different functions. So I liked that this book felt so different than the first one, despite it kind of being an apocalypse story. It still felt different. Did you feel that way? Did you feel it was similar or different in any way? It did feel different. Yeah. And I want to ask, do you think the fact that War had sex, like, from the get-go, do you think it was because he kind of witnessed pestilence, even though he was asleep? It wasn't that he witnessed. War had said that um, he has been with humans from the beginning of time. And, like, he's just been watching humans, you know. He's the one that, I guess, inspired war and all these kingdoms. And, like, he's, like, not whispering in, like, people's ears. But, like, he kind of is the one that gets the ball rolling. He's just been with humans for so long. And this was his first opportunity to be amongst humans. Um, So I think just because he's been around for so long, he knows humans Mm -hmm. like he thinks he knows humans he knows the worst of humanity for sure yeah what did you think about um war and his like sudden belief or not even his sudden belief like he knew miriam was his wife and he see like he said that it was because god himself made him made her for him and like sent him her for him how did you feel about that like i thought that was interesting at the fact that he saw her and recognized her as his wife because of the mark that she had I think, like, on yeah. her chest. But if it wasn't for that mark, he would not have made a connection with her. Do you think it, this was, like, God's plan to kind of, I don't know, kind of get him to... To, so like, reevaluate? Yeah, like, I feel like maybe God has, like, a plan, not just for the humans, but for the horsemen as well. So he kind I feel like he was kind of testing war and putting Miriam on his path. Yeah. I do feel like... Um, In terms of, like, this story, um, so basically there's four horsemen. That means humanity has four chances to prove themselves. Um, I do think God in this world had, like, maybe planted someone in each horseman's life to make them question humanity and maybe question their, like, idea of what humanity is actually like. And Mm -hmm. I do think Sarah was pestilence mate. And I do think Miriam was 
wars made in terms of like their differences and like the way they viewed humanity and things like that and the way they made the the way that they made the horsemen question themselves i also feel like god had that plan for them yeah yeah i feel like that too so do you think back to your question what were your thoughts on miriam being his wife or being marked by god i know like i don't want to compare pestilence and like war again but i just feel like in this instance war like you said is very brutal and very like rash he doesn't Mm -hmm. really seem to think things through um and he would have killed miriam if he didn't see the mark on her neck and there went his romance there went his soulmate and I do feel like he needed to have that, like, epiphany or, like, that idea that maybe I have a wife out there in this world. And, oh, whoa, it is Miriam. Miriam is my wife. Um, Where in terms of, like, pestilence, Sarah had, like, tried to kill him. And, like, he was unconscious for a while. And then he also had that epiphany and saw, like, God's will or whatever on her. So I do feel like these horsemen need to have someone holding them back. And that someone is God. Um, because then they would be killing their mates. <laughs> yeah. I think it's interesting. It's an interesting concept because, like, obviously, like, in religion, you know about these four horsemen, and, like, they're kind of given this chance at, like, experiencing humanity. Um, and I know this is fiction, but I thought, like, the romance aspect of it was really, really nice. And I love, like, I just, like, I loved him and Miriam, and I just feel like these horsemen, like we, like I said, like we've known them, known about them for like, I don't know, forever. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's good to see different takes on them and also just experience. Seeing them experience love and and seeing them change throughout the story. Yeah, I agree. And I'm like, I don't know. I just feel like where war started in the beginning of the book obviously is not where he ended up in the end of the story. And I just feel like every being should have an opportunity to go through a change or like to experience something that's different that teaches them how to love and be loved yeah so I want to bring up since we brought up already pestilence a little bit there were moments in the book where he was brought up and there was a moment where Miriam asked about pestilence and war said something something like you want to know how he was stopped and he mentioned that pestilence failed his mission during his book and that war himself will not fail. Yeah. Did you ever get the feeling like war kind of resented pestilence? Kind of like looked down on him a little bit for not accomplishing what he set out to do? I mean, I think, yeah, as a short answer. Because like, obviously war at the beginning is very set on completing his mission, which is like decimating all of humanity. Um, and maybe he felt like pestilence did fail because like he never experienced that love or like that connection with someone that pestilence had. He sacrificed his mission, his immortality that we find later on in the end of this book to be with a a woman, like a human person and have a family and raise a family and just be a unit with someone. War doesn't understand that concept. He kills families. He kills little children and old, like elderly. He doesn't understand that. So I do think in his head at the beginning, maybe he felt that maybe pestilence failed him and his mission and his brothers and God. Um, But I do think later on, obviously, he starts to understand why pestilence might have been able to do that or why he was capable of dropping his mission. What did you think? Did you feel that same way? Yeah, I felt this. I felt the same way. I felt like he kind of like looked down on him especially like in the beginning he kept he has a quote that says pestilence might have been a conqueror but i don't seek to conquer savage woman i seek to destroy i just feel like he thought pestilence let himself be swayed by a a human woman yeah and i just love the fact that he thought he wasn't gonna be like pestilence and that he ended up falling like right along his footsteps like falling along the same way pestilence did It, it was really interesting to me because like when he had these realizations he was further and further away from Miriam. Like, he was losing Miriam despite, mm-hmm. like, everything. Um, because of, like, all of his killings, raising the dead and, like, killing children and, like, letting his men go thief and raid and rape women. Like, he just, like, he just, there just wasn't, like, he just kept losing her. And, like, also there's an instance where he decides to let Miriam join him on, like, his excursions, I guess. <laughs> Um, to go and kill people in these cities. And Miriam is joining him. And then he's like, wait, you thought I didn't know what you were doing? Like, I know you're killing my men. And then, like, Miriam has, this, like, this thought. And then she's like, 
So first she thought she's doing good because she's like killing the men that are killing innocent people. Um, so basically she says, every single person I kill is one less person living on earth. All thoughts of respect resolve, sorry, dissolve away as an acute sort of devastation sinks in. I sway a little on my feet and for a moment I think I'm going to be sick. I assumed I was actually doing something useful. But in turn, you know, we know that she was literally helping War out. He said, I'm going to kill my people anyway, so thank you for killing them. Yeah. So she thought she was trying to save people. But do you think, do you think that, that she was doing bad? No, of course not. Because she was killed. I remember there was a moment where uh, a, a woman was being attacked, and I think along with her kid, or she was going to be raped. And she ends up killing him. I don't know. I don't think sh- she was doing bad. Like, I see where she probably thinks that she's helping him kill people. But she's killing people that are killing innocent women and children, you know? So I don't think what she was doing was bad. No, and I don't think so either. And I think we also should acknowledge that, like, before she met uh, War in Jerusalem, she also had killed people before, like... She's a weapons maker. Like, she had a tough life. Like, she lives in, like, the heart of Jerusalem. Her life wasn't easy. And then, um, so basically, she has already killed people. And, like, right now, she feels like she's killing an evil. She's killing these human soldiers that are just killing innocent people who are raping innocent women. And, I mean, she thinks she's doing something useful, which she kind of is. But then Ward turns around and says, actually, you're just helping me along because I'm going to kill these people anyway. So I think that's what kind of hit her. And that's like also what kind of hit me because you're like, she's trying to help these people, but like she's helping war instead. She's helping her enemy and she doesn't even realize it. Miriam and her fight for humanity. Like, I honestly feel like her character was like so well written because like she could be like, I guess, interpreted as someone that's like, you know, the hero or like, you know, just wanting to like achieve greatness. But in reality, she just wants to fight for humanity and wants to ensure that humanity survives and like like I said we even like we said that she joined on the raiding like raiding and the killing of people but she also like never gives up and like she gives war her first kiss um sorry they have their first kiss it wasn't her first kiss in exchange for him to not destroy the aviaries which is like where the birds fly out like the messenger birds And, like, she achieves that, and then she obviously has to pay up her end of the bargain and, like, obviously make out with war. But she still, like, would give things up just to help humanity just in the smallest, smallest instance. What did you think about her exchanging, like, kisses and, like, sleeping with him in order to kind of save humanity? Or, like, to give her a chance to kind of warn people? How did you feel about it? I mean, if I was in her position, I think I would. I mean, if I'm putting myself out there to save humanity, I think I would kind of do anything. I mean, (laughs) let's be (laughs) real. This girl was not trying to be noble and not trying to save humanity that night. She just needed an excuse to not feel guilty about wanting to kiss hot ass war. War. Yeah. 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 I mean, same. Same, Miriam. Same. But... (laughs) Um, I know all this just to say if I was in her position I think I would do anything in my power to help yeah I mean I would love to say I would too but I would also probably be dead I just feel like war is so scary like he was hot but scary yeah do you think you would survive like in this setting of war of the four horsemen where they're at where okay my one gripe with this book and I don't know if you agree with me on this Miriam's acceptance of like the zombies freaked me out because I would honestly never be able to forgive war despite that being inside like that's who he is like raising the dead is one of his powers I could never and the fact that she let them be her guards or like let them walk her back to camp or like just let them be there I was like "Mm -mm, mm -mm." I was not that was disgusting I didn't I actually didn't give it thought I just I thought that was interesting that he was able to raise it it was it was It was interesting and it was bad why he would raise the dead. But, I mean, they protected her. Kind of. Yeah. But I also feel like, um, like, it was interesting, yeah. But I also feel like it was, 
disturbing. Like, it was it disturbed me so much. I think this one, you know how in the old, like, the, the first book, it was, what was disturbing for me was, like, the children dying or, like, these innocent, sweet people dying that we got to know. In this one, it was more so, like, him disrupting these people's graves. Like, they lived a full life or not even a full life at all, and, like, they've been resting, and then all of a sudden you raise their bodies up, like, I understand in, like, in this world and, like, in this context, they're just shells and, like, they're not there anymore. But I do feel like it was just disturbing because, like, they were once people and they're not people anymore. They're just... I didn't I didn't think of it like that. Now that you say that you mentioned, yeah, oh. that, is, that is disturbing. Yeah. And, like, Miriam, I'm sorry, girl. War can only be so hot. I would not be able to, like, <laughs> stomach it. I couldn't. And she did say that it smelled pretty bad, too. Yeah, but it's just like, next she turns around and she's like, ooh, war, he's so fine. And, like, she jumps his bones. No, pun not intended, because he was, he was flesh, living, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and, like, he would just use the dead to, like, scare her. And, like, she would be walking away and he would just raise the dead. And she obviously couldn't go anywhere because she didn't want to touch them. But it's just like... Mm -mm. I could have done without. I could have done without that. <laughs> okay, Zeb, same, same. So, in the book, Miriam gets brutally, brutally attacked by yeah. war's men, which are actually humans, right? They're not actual, they're actual humans that joined his war, right? Yeah, they're his, like, elite group of people, like, they... But they were once human, right? Like, they're, they were actually, they're humans, basically, right? They're humans. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, there's a part in the book where she gets brutally attacked and it hurt my fucking heart um, where Miriam yeah. asks War, why did they do it? Why did they, why did those men attack me? And he goes, men's hearts are evil. And then she goes on to question. I don't I don't have it in me to disagree. I hate the horsemen. I do. But right now, I think I might hate my own kind more. Were yeah. we always this way, this cruel, or did the four horsemen that rode onto Earth make us like this? So I guess my question, my question would be: Do you think, who do you think is more worse in this book, the human or the horseman? I do feel like the humans we do get to experience, like obviously, like in terms of like the romantic lead, um, is the best of humanity. Even Sarah was like that; she was the very best of humanity. There are like hum like humans that are awful, disgusting, poor excuses of humanity. And I think in this book, Miriam experienced the worst of humanity as well as the best um, in herself. But I also feel like maybe like the horsemen weren't wrong in the sense where like some humans need to be checked, but obviously not all humans. And it just sucks that the innocent are suffering alongside those, you know, that are evil. Do you, you don't think like the humans are in their right to act this way because of what's going right. on? Yeah, like the horsemen came in and... Or do you think these, these humans are, they were already evil and they're just looking for revenge and... Exactly. No, exactly though. But the humans that he has in his elite guard, I forgot what they're called. They're considered evil. They're awful. And he knows that. But he knows that they're so brutal that they don't care that they'd kill anyone. But he keeps them close and he keeps them as his guard. That could be it. You know, like they're just evil. But I also think we should mention... Um, after this instance where Miriam gets brutally attacked, he forbids raping or, like, plundering or, like, assaulting people that are unable to fight back. And um, before that, that was never really a rule. So it was only when Miriam got attacked that, like, little notch of humanity got, like, I guess, awoken inside him. In, within war, yeah. Yeah. And so that's when he decides that raping is not going to be a thing and attacking people that are, you know, unable to fight for themselves is not going to happen. So I thought that was interesting. And do you think that only happened to awaken that part of humanity inside a war? I think it, it didn't need to happen. Because that's it's horrible no. for someone, but it it happened in order for him to kind of wake up and kind of see what the hell is going on, what his yeah. people are doing. But I also felt like it also made him more certain his mission as well. Like he's like humanity is awful; they're capable of raping or like attempting to rape people, um, so they all deserve to die. And I don't know. So I think it probably awoken something in him just to protect her and only her. Yeah. Right? And he only, 
he only protects her and only attempts to save her. And obviously it's because she's his wife. But, I mean, he even says, like, her heart's good enough. But, like, I, if she was anyone else, she would have died. And he even says it, though. Like, he judges everyone's hearts before, like, he kills them. But he also says hearts are fickle. Like, human hearts are fickle. Um, so, like, they could be good today, but, like, evil tomorrow. And so he just kills everyone before that switch happens. Even children. He kills children. Yeah, that's horrible. Didn't, didn't it break your heart a little bit, um, that quote? Where he says, I didn't mean for this, wife. I never meant for this. And then when he says, when, when you cried, no one came, no one but me. Oh, I know. Did that bring your heart a little bit? No, but then again, that's also, like, another instance of, like, the worst in humanity. Like, you just ignore people's cries for help. And I feel like that's something that happens so much, even in our world today. It's, like, you ignore people in need. Like, I guess, like, the simplest example would be, like, if you're on the street and then you see someone that's in you know, dire straits, or, like, maybe they don't have a home, you kind of, like, turn the other way. Like, you don't look at them, or you don't even acknowledge them as a person. Some people do that, and it's just, like, it's heartbreaking, because they are people, they are, like, in need of help, and we just ignore their cries for help. Yeah, and then we think that maybe we're, we're ignoring them to protect ourselves? Do you think maybe? I don't know, like, I feel like in, in this instance in the book, I feel like, where she was was where all the women and children la- live. No, sorry, not children. He didn't spare children. All the women and elderly, where they were. And um, so maybe they just wanted to save themselves and not be hurt or not, like like you said, save themselves and like self-preservation and all of that. But no one came for her. Like no one came to help her. That's horrible. Even her friend Zara. I mean, like she wasn't at that in that part of the the camp I don't think but she said she heard her cries and didn't know it was her though and I think she apologized right yeah like there was like an instance where they talked but like she just says I didn't know it was you but so like if it was anyone but Miriam would she not have went to help her if she could mm. and look at me like I'm not here like standing <laughs> like I don't know what I go and help I feel like I I would like to say I would yeah but I feel like you won't know unless you're in that situation it makes me think of, like, I've seen, like, videos of, I just saw one yesterday. There's this woman, I think she was dragged into a van, and she was screaming, help, help. And there was this person, I think, like, up in a balcony just recording, and he's screaming at them, like, what's going on, what's going on? But he didn't go down to investigate. And the van was sitting there for quite a while. So I feel like there could have been a moment where he could have, you know, gone down or called 911, but he was just recording. Yeah, call 911. I feel like in our day and age, if things happen like that, I feel like calling 911, like, it should be, like, instinct at this point. Or, like, just be, like, the automatic thought. and Yeah, or, like, running down and, like, trying to record, like, the license plate or, or I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, honestly, like, to be honest, I feel like we're not too far off from, like, the horsemen coming. Because right now, I just feel like that's so heartbreaking that we would rather have a video that has millions of hits on our social media instead of going and trying to help that person in need. Yeah. It's fucking sad. Yeah, this book's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about, were there any happy moments in the book? Okay, how did you feel about the first time they had sex? <laughs> um, yeah, it was hot. They were hot. He was hot. His mouth, whoo, yeah, I died. And like, oh my gosh, his first instance, like when he was talking about like, what a perfect husband would do and like it would be like uh, tie her to the bed and let like me, do this and this to her and I was like oh there was a quote where he said I was like oh my god I know I needed a moment where she asked like if I'm your wife why don't you sleep in the same tent as why don't I sleep in the same tent as you and yeah. she kind of stops herself from saying anything he's like go on tell tell me Miriam all the rest why don't I fuck you raw and if he's on your pussy and keep you chained to my bed like a proper husband I was like what War. Holy damn. Uh, did he end up chain- chaining her, like, on to his no. battery? No, huh? He didn't deliver And on that's that, another but... gripe I have, Miss Talasa. Yeah. Don't promise me a bondage scene. And even Miriam was into it because she said something about chains and she's like, ooh, like, she was disappointed that he didn't chain her to the bed. 
And then he was like, wait, what? And he was so intrigued and she was also excited for it. And it never happened. So hopefully within the next two books, we get a little sun sun. I do, I like, I'm curious about Fairman, but I just feel like that death is going to be cruel. It's like you're being starved to death. Yeah. Whereas I feel like war was just like instant death, you know? Like it wasn't no struggling, no suffering. You just died. Do Have you seen where Famine's book takes place? Uh, no, I haven't. But people really like that one too. So I'm curious to see if I'll like it as well. But I feel like war, I liked it a lot more than the first one. Okay, so I also wanted to talk about, like, War and his affection for Miriam because I couldn't really call it love at the beginning because he didn't really know what that was and, like, I don't even know what he, like, if what he felt was love or, like, more, like, possession or obsession. I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But anyways, um, I just felt like we're, like, I've established really early on that War would never kill Miriam. He punishes her in different ways because of her soft heart and, like, because of his affection he feels for her. Miriam tries to warn a city. Um, she goes in the middle of the night on his horse and she warns the city that war is coming. He's going to kill you all. So she tries to start an evacuation, but then war ends up coming and he ends up destroying the city with the dead. And like even the people that died a second ago would be raised back up again to kill their own family, their children, their husbands, their wives, their parents. And it's just, like, she was forced to watch it. He held her down to watch it. And, like, that punishment of her seeing, like, these people that she tried to save killing each other was, like, so heartbreaking to me. And I, like, I ended up shedding a tear. Really? Because it's, like, this girl was trying to do, like, the best and, like, be a good person and, like, help these people. But, like, it wasn't enough. It was not enough. And he punishes her for that. And, like, it's just, like, it was so sad. No, and it's horrible. Um, It was horrible. But didn't he promise himself that he was going to give her a chance to kind of use the aver- the aviaries? Or did he just promise the fact that he wasn't going to destroy them, but not... He just promised he wasn't going to destroy it. And then he also said he wasn't going to stop his, his soldiers from killing the birds, leaving the aviary. But he wasn't going to tell them to kill them you know like it was more so if they killed them they killed they them they killed them but he wasn't gonna stop it so Miriam had taken it upon herself to go first the aviary and try to get a message out and she did I think it did make it yeah it did um but I just like I don't know like war and his like feelings to Miriam and like his punishments like it did never stopped and like Miriam is a strong woman like I would have broken so many times like mm-mm and then, okay, so I don't remember. Was it, like, okay, so she tried to, like, kill him. She knows that he wouldn't die, but it would, like, put him down for, like, a few hours or, like, a few minutes, whatever, mm-hmm. so that she could run away. And then he comes and he gets her. No, what happened was she couldn't kill him, right? She couldn't kill him. And he's like, oh, my gosh, you were going to kill me? And so she failed at doing so and to to punish her he kills everyone in the camp in front of her yeah. all the people that she got to know i was so sad and i i thought he was going to end up killing the friend and the little boy oh my gosh me too and I'm- imagine if he would have done that like as punishment i i don't think i would have forgiven him like i think that would have gone as- too far well, let me tell you i i honestly felt the blood leave my face really? when that was happening and like she's talking about like these women that I like would smoke and gossip with me are just now dust like mm-hmm. they're dead these men that you know like were there and were doing things and like she was like heart like her heart was breaking like my heart was breaking because I was like we knew these people and like he's killing them and it's just like I'm happy he spared Zara and Mahmood because I would not be able to forgive him and I don't think Marion would have been able to forgive him either just like pestilence in his first book, something happens. I don't know. Remind me. Something happens where he ends up stopping, right? He completely mm-hmm. ends up stopping. And in this book, he ends up stopping as well once he finds out that she's pregnant. Yeah. Do you think that was, I don't want to say if that was enough, but do you think... If she wouldn't have gotten pregnant, do you think he would have ever stopped? Um, I think he would, yeah. Um, simply because with his actions, like going back to like what he did about like, you know, killing people in front of her, making her watch and like 
making her like experience their deaths I think his actions were pushing her away and like it was causing her to go in like self-preservation mode and like he was losing her he was honestly losing the warmth that they felt for one another he was losing like her love her caring like her caring side he was losing it all and like I do feel like he he knew what it felt like and he was losing it so I do feel like eventually he might have stopped and like given up his his fight but the baby I think helped push it along because he even says that um I couldn't keep doing it anymore because I kept seeing the faces of those children as my own and like he would end up bringing like bringing home children like hundreds and hundreds of children for like you know the people to take care of and like help them because he kept seeing his child's face in their faces. That's right. He kept, he ended up bringing a bunch of children, right? Yeah. And then it didn't stop there. He started bringing the elderly and like they kind of stopped killing altogether. And he left this whole new, I guess, group of people. He just left them to start a new life because he's like, I'm done killing because I'm having a family. I know what it means to lose someone and I don't want to experience that. So do you think that that was enough for him? Like, and like forgive everything he did prior? E- like to easily forgive him? I think if, if I was in that situation, I think it would have taken me a little bit to be like, we, yeah. we're good, War. Like you did I mean, a lot. if but. you think about it also, Miriam was scared and she was scared that he would kill his own child. So she ran away. And... He was like, you would think that I'd kill my own family. Like, are you crazy? And then she's like, well, you've killed so many innocent yeah. children. You've killed babies. Hello. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I do, I don't know. I just, in terms of war and like, I guess his redemption story, I feel like we can't really, we can't really judge him based on our own moral compass and like what we deem right or wrong because he isn't human. Like he doesn't. He doesn't, he wasn't raised with the same ideals that we were raised. So I don't think that you could judge him with the same justice system we have. Because you, you, like, we can't deny, despite it all being in Miriam's perspective, we can't deny that, you know, he did, like, he loved her. He loved Miriam. And it might, might have been in his own way since he was learning love through her and, like, through her eyes. So I don't know. I feel like. He did a lot of questionable things and unforgivable things, but I also feel like that's just what his purpose was. His purpose in this world was to kill people, and, like, he got his purpose from God. Like, he thought he was doing... He, he was doing his duty. At the end of the day, he was doing what he was set to do. What do we think is the monster of the story? Do you have any monsters for Miriam? I wouldn't say it was a monster for Miriam, but more so, like, a monster between the two of them. Um, I think it was, like, the lack of communication and, like, not, like, the stereotypical way, like, oh, um, miscommunication or something. It was just, like, both War and Miriam suffer from not being able to talk things through. And I feel like that stemmed from, obviously, her being human and him not being human. And, like, she had human mentality and, like, obviously, like, he's not able to understand that and he has a duty he was created to do. Mm -hmm. But he also fails to see things her way and he doesn't want to see things her way. Like, she doesn't... Like, he doesn't want to see humanity as good because, like, his purpose is to destroy them and kill them. Um, And she obviously doesn't want to see people die. And that's his whole purpose. And when he says he judges all people, she doesn't listen to him, really. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, like, why would she listen to him, though, for, like, judging everyone? Because he says he judges their hearts, but then he ends up killing everyone. Since human hearts, like I said, are fickle and can change with the tide. So I just feel like her and un- like inability to understand his purpose and his inability to understand where she's coming from and like her purpose in the camp it kind of causes them to not be able to communicate properly. Yeah, I can definitely see that as being their monster. What about you? I think for Miriam's it was a little hard to point something out, but maybe maybe her being impulsive at times oh okay like i understand that she was and i appreciated that she went above and beyond to try to help people yeah but like i kind of noticed that maybe it was a little bit impulsive like how she would kind of take off and like she tried to warn the other cities and at the end of the day it 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 didn't help they ended up dying they ended up dying quickly and 
maybe more brutally. Yeah. But I also feel like her impulsiveness can also be seen in, like, when she's also, like you said, trying to save people. But also when she's trying to kill his his elite team of soldiers, she even jumps into a burning building to lose the guy. And she ends, ends up almost dying to kill this one person. So, yeah, she's impulsive. But it's more so, like, I guess the self-sacrifice notion. You know, she's a, she's a martyr. Yeah. <laughs> she wouldn't care if she died saving someone and, like... And also, uh, I had war in his perception of humanity, which we already talked about. And, like, it was, like, him being at the beginning of time with humans. And, like, he just knows the hearts of humans because of, like, how long he's been around and his ability to judge them. And he's just extremely jaded when we meet him in this book. And he's, he's lived his own experiences with humans. And he believes humanity cannot be saved because of his past experiences. And then, like, pestilence... He comes here, but he's lost that humanity, like that innocence that Pestilence had throughout his whole book. And yeah, so basically it was his perception of humanity, which slowly changes with like Miriam and his love for Miriam. How did you feel about the pregnancy, you know, announcement? I feel like we kind of just like talked about it. We didn't like talk about the pregnancy. Did you feel like it fit into the story? Did you feel like it, you were expecting it? I mean, once she, because I think they mentioned earlier, she asked him something along the lines like, can I get pregnant or something like that? And he's yeah. just like, no, like, but once they mentioned that, I was like, okay, I feel like she's going to probably get pregnant later on. And then when she started like throwing up and all that. How did he not get anyone else pregnant, though? Because he just says. Because other people weren't his wife. I don't know, she because like he one. just says, like, why would you think I'd have bastard children running around everywhere? And then she's like, okay, fine, I won't bring it up again. But like he got her pregnant, so I'm just confused how that how that works. Maybe you have to be in love. I don't know. I feel like maybe it was God's plan. True. Right? Yes. That in yeah. this world, it was God's plan to kinda like yeah. I feel like he's testing everybody, humanity, and I feel like he's testing the four horsemen. And, okay, we're not even talking about the ending. Oh, yes. <laughs> what did you think about that whole him being attacked and killed and then... Okay, l- let, the me, let me set the scene. Let okay, me okay, set okay, the go. scene. <laughs> okay, so basically, um, like we said, he decides to um, stop the killing and stop the judgment of humanity and just mm-hmm. live his life with Miriam. He doesn't tell his elite soldiers that he's going to do this, so they decide that they're going to capture him and kill him because they don't want to die, and they obviously don't know War's plan to release them. Well, we don't even know if War planned to release them or kill them because they are um, the scourge of humanity. So they decide to capture him, behead him, and then surround him in a hole with bombs and... One of the people that also decided to do that and work with everyone was her friend, who she thought was her friend, Hussein. And it was like, for me, it was kind of like, I was shocked because like Hussein was always like, like a sweet guy. And like, he always like warned Miriam of things that were going on and like helped her whenever he could. So like, I don't know, I guess in his eyes, he thought he was doing good. He was trying to help humanity. I felt the betrayal. I was, I wasn't expecting him to. To do all that and try to kill her. Maybe he thought, like, he was helping humanity because he obviously wasn't privy to what was going on with Miriam and and War. He wasn't aware that War was planning to stop killing. So my girl Miriam becomes, like, this intense warrioress and, like, kills all these, like, soldiers. And, like, she yeah. finds his body and he's decapitated and he's surrounded by bombs. And, like, it was stressful. I was teary-eyed and then um things go boom and she dies this is where i'm saying she was very impulsive like she could have well maybe she couldn't have because if he would have regenerated and then come back and then there would have been an explosion regardless right because you know how he was in the in the hole with the bombs and everything and this is where i think it comes in where her impulsiveness comes in yeah like she could have waited for him to regenerate and then come back But then again, if he would have regenerated, the bombs would have gone off. Exactly. And they would have just kept going off. I mean, I feel like if they waited maybe a week or two, he probably would have been all bombed out and like would have regenerated. But I feel like it just like is a a testament of how much she grew to love him and she couldn't live without him. And I feel like 
as readers, we kind of get to see that because, like, we know him as, like, this epitome of evil that slowly found his humanity. And, like, we, like, she learned to not be ashamed of her love for him, I feel, because, like, she always tried to, like, bury it down or, like, be ashamed of, like, what she felt for him. Um, and she never told him she loved him, despite War telling her, I love you, like, numerous times. She never really said it to him, and, like, she had that moment of regret. She's like, I never told him I loved him. And, like, I guess that intensity or like that that feeling she had of like desperation I guess you could say she never got to tell him so she wasn't really thinking rationally I think at that point I kind of wasn't I kind of wasn't expecting that she was gonna blow up me either and like when he's like I held what seemed like her torso I was like she's gonna magically come back together and be like a whole person yeah, and then yeah. he's like, he started crying and sobbing. And I was like, wait, war is crying and sobbing? Like, what? Yeah. I couldn't handle it. It was so sad because I was like, this man is like this. He's not even a man. He's like this godly being who's mm-hmm. sobbing over this human who would he would have killed if she wasn't his wife. I just felt like that's when you kind of realize he's come such a long way. And then so she dies, and then he goes to his brother, Death, Thanatos, and he begs his brother to bring her back, and, like, he wants her. He's like, I don't care, I just need her back in my life, and not only do I need her, I need my baby. And we find out Mm -hmm. that it's a little girl that she was pregnant with, and then Death spares her, and we finally find out what happens when they, like, stop their mission. They become human! Oh, yes. Yeah, they become human after their mission. So that means pestilence is human. Now war is human. And I'm just like, I'm happy. I'm happy we finally know what happens at the end, you know? And then pestilence and Sarah have, they have kids, like multiple kids, right? Yeah, I don't know. I just thought like it was great. And like what I also really liked about this um, was... It was kind of like a metaphor, you like, you know, becoming human. It's like, it's going to sound really cheesy, okay. But, like, (laughs) love makes us all human and, like, we become vulnerable because we choose to share our lives with someone else. And I feel like Mm -hmm. that kind of happened with War as well. Like, he becomes vulnerable because he starts to love. He drops his mission because he starts to love and be vulnerable with someone else. And, like, it was a great metaphor for love. How did you feel about the ending? Like, the absolute ending where, like, so we find out that um, Miriam, when she was younger, she got separated from her mother and her sister mm-hmm. because of um, they tried to flee their country on a boat. And I guess they were refugees, obviously. So they were trying to go to, and live a better life. But what happens is the boat capsizes and mm-hmm. she gets separated from her mother and her sister and she gets a second chance at life, um, which is why the mark comes about. But she, mm-hmm. lost, she lost them. She didn't know where they were. And then years later, um, I think it was like was it a year or two after the events of the book. Two years later. Two years. Yeah. Um, she finds them. War finds her family for her. And she actually gets to see them again. Yeah, I thought that was a nice surprise. At least nice enough to like end the story like that. That she was reunited with her mom and her sister. And she had the chance to introduce War and her little baby. Yeah. Which I thought was nice. Yo, I love when she like... Mom, this is my husband, war. And then, like, they're all like, oh, wait, what? And then she's like, I'm, he, he's retired now. <laughs> he's a good guy now. Yeah, he I know, won't kill I you. <laughs> I was dying. I just, like, the image with war, like, war and his child had me melting. Yeah, I thought that was so cute. I know, because, like, <laughs> the daughter sounded so cute, and she's, like, didn't want, like, she didn't want to let go of her dad. How did you feel that our man War didn't take another name, like Pestilence with Victor? Oh, yeah. No, I thought that was great. War. That's fine. <laughs> I call him War. <laughs> I, I know. Like, imagine going from Pestilence to Victor. Like, I understand where he was going with that, but... Yeah. But I feel like that's so... Like, I already read both books. I feel like that's so Pestilence. Like, that's something mm-hmm. he would do. Change his name to Victor. Yeah. And War is just like, no, I'm keeping my name. No, and, like, I'm just happy, like I said, like, there was no copy and paste with either books. Like, they are very much different, and, like, they have their own strengths. And I'm happy that they weren't similar. Like, they had similar aspects, of course. It was, like, human girl with godly being, and, like, she has to make him find his humanity. Like, like, it's kind of the same in that sense, but, like, the events that 
unfold in each book are different. And like, I don't know. They're just different. So which one would you prefer so far? War or pestilence? I choose war. I'm not, I'm answering for myself. Uh, yeah. Just, I think I'm going to go with war. No. Are we, are we thinking like them as their horsemen version? Are we thinking them once they're in love and I think I think and human like and everything together like they're them without their woman and just like them after I guess yeah after love I'll go with war I also find it like really hard <laughs> like okay for me I was thinking more so like like their my death like I know this sounds very morbid but like my death with pestilence, if I ended up getting the plague, would be painful, and I would just die painfully. But with war, if I end up dying with him, it'll just be blink and I'm dead, you know? But then it, I might be risen as, like, a zombie. So, so are you asking what form of death we would pick? No, I don't know. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, yes, of course, I would choose war because he's, like, hot, like, he's great, he's a great man by the end of it yeah. sure but i'm thinking more so like if i have to end up dying like what in case i betray one of them you know like pestilence or war like i betray them you know if something happens i don't know anyway so it's my yeah. time to die and then which death would you prefer i would prefer war I, this is so morbid i think we just need to stop this would you prefer to be attacked by zombies seth oh my god would you prefer to be attacked by sickness but the sickness was painful remember slow slow death or it was like you have boils and like they itch and then uh, no i choose zombie death <laughs> zombie okay what about you i'll join you too i'll okay. join you with the zombies and war and the quick death okay and okay do you think this book could be read as a standalone no i don't think so you think you have to read the first one and then read this one yeah, especially because of the way they mentioned pestilence and how he was stopped and like, I don't know. I th I think you would need to read the first book just to get the whole picture. I feel like if you don't mind missing out on like what pestilence was, like how he became the way he was and like how he, I guess, quote unquote, failed his mission, then I feel like it could be read as a standalone, to be honest, because I feel like they mentioned pestilence, but it's not like needed for the plot of this book but I do feel like if you want to experience like the fullness of the story I do feel like you need to read book the one book. then book two are you uh are you gonna be reading the third one anytime soon uh I think I'm gonna wait a little bit and then yeah dive in yeah what about you I agree with that as well because I just I still feel like these books are so heavy like I've read dark romance I've read um Tilly Cole were like their serial killers like I've read dark romance but I feel like for some instant like for some reason these feel heavier to me and I think it's because all the innocent lives that are being taken away and like the way that they go I don't know I just find it so hard to read so so you think it's a little bit heavier than Tilly Cole's oh 100% like, I do feel like this is heavier even even with reading like the the novella like the beginning the prequel when they were kids Okay, yeah, like, that's a whole all that other, together, like, like, okay, we're talking about um, the Deadly Virtues series by Tilly Cole. The novella is how they become who they are, and they obviously, there's a lot of uh, things that happen. Trigger warning, there's rape of minors, there is brutal, like, tortures and beatings and things like that. It's brutal, like, that, the novella, but I just feel like... I don't know, there's some, like, there's a heaviness that I feel with this series, and I don't know if it's just, like, um, the first book I thought it was just because of, like, the coronavirus and, like, what we're suffering through right now, and, like, we're kind of getting out of it, but not really, but I thought it was just, like, the resemblance between, like, what was going on in that book versus what's going on in our society, but then I read this book, and then I'm like, sure, wars are happening right in this area where the, these books are taking place but I just like for me it was like all the innocent lives being taken and like the deaths raising the dead I don't know I found this book really heavy and like it didn't sit well in my heart I don't know if that means anything whereas Tilly Cole I feel like they're heavy they hurt but they're fulfilling in the end whereas all the innocents that died in this book it wasn't fulfilling for them I guess you can look at it as yes it's fulfilling because they went 
as war said it, they went home, but they just didn't live a full life on this earth. And it's just so sad. And now I'm going to cry because it was just so sad. Don't cry, Seth. Don't cry. <laughs> no, yeah, I get what you're saying. So I need, I need to put a few months buffer between me and the third book. Anything else you want to mention? I am excited for Death. I think he sounds hot AF, and yeah. I am curious to see what his book would be like. I hope it's a, I re, for, for his book, I hope it's a thick one. Like, I hope it's, like, really thick. Ooh, you want it thick and long? Thick and long. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> it's the last book, and we've had, like, such a buildup. Like, we won't have, like, little moments of him. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I expect, I expect a lot of thickness. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, and length and girth. Um, I agree. And he also has wings. So I am curious about how that... I want wing play. I need his wings to be sensitive, if you know what I'm saying. Other than that, I think his. I think all the females... Not all. There's only two that I've read from the series. They're all amazing. So I'm hoping his woman's also amazing. And I hope Famine's woman is also amazing. I do think the writing is really good. So like, if this is a series you haven't really thought about picking up I know we kind of spoiled the whole thing if you are listening to this and you haven't read the book I mean yeah that's great but I also feel like if you haven't read the book and you want to read the book I do feel like the writing should be acknowledged I think it was really good and like it does yeah. despite it being only one person um first person POV it does encompass his feelings as well like I still felt his feelings I just did want to mention like the beginning of the book, it happened in year 13. And then when Famine awakens, it's year 16. So all that that happened between them, between War and Miriam was three years, right? Yeah. So um, so obviously, I think it was like a, a few months, maybe in terms of like the events of the story. But then the two year jump when she finally meets her mom and sister. And then after that, yes, War. Not War. Sorry. Famine awakens. Famine wakes up. Okay. I thought it was funny that... Um, Miriam kept commenting like how young War was because like he was like I think only awoken for like two years or like a year or two I don't remember and like she was like I'm like 20 I think she was 21 or 22 and like I don't know I thought it was funny it was cute any other comments um no I think I think we're can close up so that has been our discussion on War by Laura Thalassa on Romancing the Monsters I really hope you enjoyed it you can find us online at Romancing the Monsters Podcast on Instagram, at the RTM Pod on Twitter, Romancing the Monsters Pod on TikTok, and you can also email us at Romancing the Monsters Podcast at gmail.com. And you can also find us on YouTube if you prefer to hear us and follow along with captions. At Romancing the Monsters. It's just Romancing the Monsters. Search that up on YouTube. <laughs> And you can find me, S, on both Instagram and Twitter at ButThisBook. And you can find me, Seth, on both Instagram and Twitter at Pros with Woes. Please uh, feel free to leave us any rating or review on any podcast platform. It would mean the world to us. We Any rating we see or any review we see, it honestly makes us feel so good inside. So uh, if you have the time, please uh, rate us or review us. And that is it. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye.